Good morning. I apologize for being out. I am sick with the flu, so I am sorry. My voice is a little rough. Uh, you should be working on your Geometry Basics review and the sheets that I have left you for practice, which you should already have in your folder. Uh, the Geometry Quiz Review, you should have this sheet. I expect you to complete it and turn it in. As you're going through, if you're stuck on something, try it on your own first, but if you get stuck, come and see the video, and I'll try to walk you through it. So let's see. For these, we're trying to identify each as true or false. The first one is BC. So let's find BC. B to C. And this symbol in the middle here, this means parallel. Okay, so this symbol that looks like two lines that are next to each other, they look parallel, means parallel. So I need to find AE. The symbol that tells us if they are parallel is this one right here. Do you see how it has like a little arrow drawn through it? This arrow means that they are in fact parallel. So this one is true. We're good to go on that. Okay? So number one true. Let's try the next one. Remember that you can use highlighters or colored pencils to help you as you go. All right, angle B, C, F, or excuse me, B, F, C. And we're looking for an angle we can tell from the symbol. So I start at B and find out where I'm looking at. What angle is it? I'm going to travel from B to F to C. Okay, that's the first angle. And it says it's congruent, the same as. E, F, A. So let's go from E to F to A. All right. Now the way I can tell that they're congruent is, do you see the little arc in the middle here? There's a single arc that has been drawn, like a bridge from one side to the other. Since these angles both have the same number of arcs, one and one, we know that those two are a pair that go together. They are congruent. They are the same angle measure. They are equal. So this one is true, right? So A is true, B is true. Let's travel forward, shall we? CD is congruent to ED. CD, and here is ED. All right, now this one has two marks. You see right here that there are two tick marks in the middle, two little hash marks. But this one has three. So even though they might look like they're congruent, the lines, the marks are saying that they are not, that they are different from each other. Looks like this one matches up with one of the others that have two. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, CD is not congruent to ED. This is false. Okay. Okay, so we'll delete this. G is the midpoint of AB. Um, this one is going to be hard for you because uh, we didn't talk a lot about midpoints. You can skip this one and know that it is false. Or you could tell because a midpoint means that you're talking about halfway. If AB is right here, in order for G to be halfway, half means you've got the exact same amount on one side as the other if it's perfectly cut in half. But our line markings say that this side is congruent with, uh, has the same length as some other side. Since the hash marks are different, one and two, they're not equal to each other. And if they're not equal, then G didn't split it in half. Okay, so it's not the midpoint. All right, then it's asking me if the measure of angle EDC is 90 degrees. Here's EDC. And in the mouth of that angle, inside, remember the angle is always the inside, you can see there's a little corner drawn there. That corner symbol means that it's 90 degrees. So this one is true. Okay, the measure of EDC is equal to 90. All right, onwards. Let's try this out. Solve for x. All right, so when we're looking at these angles, the first thing that you probably want to try doing is highlight the angles that we're looking at so you know what we're talking about. I've got one angle right here and the other angle right here. Now these guys 
are not neighbors. They don't share a side, right? They're directly across from each other. If I wanted to go from this angle on the top to the angle on the bottom, I would have to go through another space. It's like two pieces of pie that don't touch. They're not next to each other. That means that they're vertical. They're directly across from each other. And vertical angles are congruent. Okay? These are congruent angles, which means that they're equal to each other. That's helpful because it's going to let us set up an equation. Okay? I can set up an equation and say that the top angle, 5x plus 8, has to be equal to the bottom angle of 7x minus 38. Once I know that they're equal to each other, I'm saying that this first angle is equal to the one on the bottom. I can use that information to solve. All right? So after I set up my equation, what I want to do is box each of my variables. If I don't have to distribute, which I don't, so I'm going to box them. Oh, that's really rough. Let's undo that and let's try highlighting them instead. So I've got one group here, I've got another group right here, I've got another group here, and another one here. And I'm going to go through the math on this one, but not on the next ones, okay? Alright, so now that I know where I'm grouped up, I can sort them. If it has an x in it, it goes on this side, the x side of the equation. Right? And if it doesn't have an x on it, it goes on this side, the number side of the equation. Okay, so let's put things where they belong. 5x, you can stay. You belong on the on the this side of the equal sign, right? And then if I put my equal sign where it's supposed to be, the 7x has to move, doesn't it? or uh, excuse me, the 8, which would be the next term, I have 5x, which stays 8, is a number, no x in it, so it has to go to the other side. It was a plus 8, so now I'm going to make it a minus 8. The next term or group I have is 7x. It needs to go on the left with the other x's. It was a plus 7x, so now it's going to be minus 7x. Okay. And the last term is minus 38, and it's going to... It's on the right side where the numbers belong, so it can stay on the right side where the numbers belong. Negative x minus 38. Now just so that you know, um, please feel free to use Desmos as you're doing your algebra here to solve. You can go on, open a new browser, and Google Desmos, and it'll bring up a calculator that you can use, okay? So here we have our equations and we're going to solve and combine. 5x and I'm taking away two of those gives me or seven of those gives me negative 2x and then if I have negative 8 and I take away 38 more then I have taken away <coughs> excuse me uh, 46 altogether now we're going to divide by 2 on both sides, and a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Okay. And so our x is going to be equal to 46 divided by 2. Four go, 2 goes into 4 twice, and it goes into 6 3 times. So we get 1x is equal to 13. Or excuse me, 23. <coughs> So um, once you know and you've, your equation is set up, follow these steps and you should be able to solve for x.